only those ones are allowed by law to charge for for such services mm. when it comes to the deposit it's actually very dicey because the essence of the deposit is to cushion both of you such that um, if you move into my house, I need to know that you are going to stay for a while, or maybe you are going to stay for the length of the agreement, or that you are going to keep my house in good order. Ideally, the deposit is supposed to be refundable, ideally. But um, we all know that most landlords generally refuse to part with the deposit. Most of them um, use certain excuses like, um, I, I need to inspect the house, that the paintwork is not good, or, the, or you damaged some, some fixtures, maybe the light fixtures or the plumbing. But normally that is just an excuse. By law, the rent, sorry, the deposit should be refundable. So does the, law, does the law protect me to get my deposit back? Yes, you can you can sue the landlord for but now to get your deposit suing for, back. Suing for my thirty thousand shillings doesn't make any doesn't make financial sense because the moment I go see a lawyer, akifungwa mdo mo even elfutano. Akifungwa not bad and ndike barua ni 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 serve my landlord. It's actually money. So yes. what is the best way to get your money back from a landlord? And my second question is, and maybe one of the panelists can actually address, is actually. When I paid, and I'm giving a very good example of myself. Yes. I went and rented a house. Yes. It's a nice house. The landlord said, oh, you have a 5,000 liter tank on the rooftop. Mm. But it, no, 10,000, it was 5,000. Uh, the landlord tells me that the electric quarks and the drainage works, but they don't work. Mm -hmm. And when I told him these things don't work, he told me, you take it as it is basis. That wasn't in the contract, but he lied to me. But legally, where do I go? So talk about a cheaper way of getting back my deposit mm -hmm. and why, and maybe someone, one of the panelists actually should address this, and a cheaper way of getting my deposit back without getting a lawyer to charge me a leg and an arm plus my kidneys. <laughs> you see, there might not be a cheaper way because you see this, this deposit is money in the landlord's pocket. Yes. And for you to reach inside, like for me to reach inside your pocket to get that money. Levita. Yes. yes. So that's why you can only do it legally. Once you get a court order, you see, if he does not pay you, then there'll be other consequences. But if you decide that maybe because my deposit was 30,000, let me take, given the, if we take the example that you used, let me take the tank that you used, that is there. You see, you can be sued for, you can be charged with stealing. So you, unfortunately, you have to follow the laid down procedure to get there the deposit. But following the law is very expensive. Why not go to Mungiki? That is another, that, that's <laughs> another offense. That, that, that's another offense. Because okay. remember, um, in some quarters, Mungiki is called a vigilante sect. Just like the police. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 well. Your words, not mine. But yeah. we, we all have to follow this lay down procedure because if everybody did that, yes. you can imagine what would, what would happen. But um, ideally, the landlords should refund, should refund the, should refund the, the, deposit. the deposit. But most of them, the excuse they use or the reason they use is that it is to return the premises to the condition that it was. Yeah. If you've lived in a house for maybe 10, 5 years, or even 2 years, if you have small children, you know, they have written on their walls or maybe the, some, some things are broken here and there. The deposit is supposed to be used to return the premises to the previous condition. Okay. So it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's something that needs to be balanced by both the I tenant and the landlord. So I'll go to Jackson and I'll ask Jackson and I'll ask my other question that was, you get a house, yes. you're told the house is in very good condition. Mm. It's in a very bad condition and you can't move out because you've already moved, moved into that house. Uh, so you have to spend money repairing, but the landlord doesn't refund you. Does the law protect you against such expenses? Jackson. Um, that's a very interesting question, and it has very many facets to it. The first is that, uh, as uh, Angela has already alluded to, the problem that we face generally in the country is that there is no specific law that governs a landlord-tenant relationship 
particularly in the modern economy that we currently operate in. Mm -hmm. You may be aware that there is currently a law called the Rent Restrictions Act, which ideally was intended to protect people during a certain period of time when rents were a bit cheaper of 2,500 shillings and below. Now, for that period of time, there was adequate protection for what a landlord could do or not do. In the sense that tenants were so much protected that any attempt to take advantage of a tenant um, would either lead to criminal uh, or penal consequences against the landlord or entitle the tenant to certain remedies specified in that particular act. Now, fast forward to the current economy that we are in, all relationships between landlords and tenants, save for certain specified terms that are implied, are governed by contracts. Yeah. Now, contracts, as you know, are generally governed by what we call, we call in technical terms, um, um, laissez-faire principles, where you are free to agree on the terms of your relationship as you go into a contract. Now, because of the power imbalance that we find ourselves in, very many people looking for places to rent and very few landlords, landlords generally have a greater bargaining power in terms of what terms go into that relationship. Because of that, we have had situations where you are required to pay, as you say, a security deposit, yeah. but the conditions that are placed in, order, in that contract in order for you to get a refund of that contract are usually so onerous and you can be sure that at the time you're signing that contract, you are aware that they are so onerous that it would be virtually impossible to recover that deposit. But because of that power imbalance, you are forced to sign the contract in any event. Now, how do you recover uh, that kind of deposit um, under such circumstances? One, of course, you have to also as a tenant, be disciplined in the observance of the terms of the relationship that you have gotten yourself into. Pray and mm -hmm. hope that if you keep your bargain, your end of the bargain, the landlord will keep his end of the bargain. Of course, we know that in most circumstances, once the money has been paid, it is appropriated by the landlord for his own use. And therefore, yeah. at the time you give the landlord notice of uh, the, your intention to vacate the premises, the landlord either is not in a position to pay you um, um, that security deposit or just simply flatly refuses to pay you that deposit. One of the ways in which I think it may now be possible to, as you say in your words, cheaply um, um, get back security deposits um, and given the limitations of the options that are available for such processes is the recent initiative by the government to uh, promulgate uh, small claims uh, courts um, laws or regulations. Um, Angela, you can, you, can, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the intention of that legislation is to excuse the payment of court fees, all right? And to allow individuals to file claims directly without the representation of an advocate where the claim is of 1 million shillings and below. Remember that the, 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 the restraint, the constraint generally um, with following all these um, due processes or legal processes is with the cost of getting legal services. Yes. And so if that cost is going to be taken away, then um, those constraints are more or less you know, uh, done away with. And uh, it is expected that because of the nature of the claims in those particular courts, the processes there will also be fast tracked. And therefore, such disputes can now be resolved much faster without the fear that it will not be financially feasible to go after a tenant, a landlord, for example, who has um, 
um, who is refusing to let go of, say, your 50,000 okay. students or 30,000 students. So do you have a timeline? When will that happen? The small um, claims court. I, I, I believe uh, as, as we speak, uh, the bill has already gone through public participation. I'm aware that the Law Society of Kenya and a number of lawyers um, yeah. Including the lawyers have, as a matter of fact, submitted uh, uh, their comments on that particular bill. I know that naturally there's a pushback from lawyers because it gets into uh, their revenues and business opportunities. Very true. Um, but um, um, as far as I'm aware, uh, whatever proposals and uh, concerns lawyers may have about that bill, um, are for the consideration of parliament. Parliament is not really um, bound by them. And now it is up to parliament to determine um, what in the public interest would be uh, most appropriate for, for, for the kinds of claims that uh, um, those courts uh, should handle. Okay. Uh, Wawero. Hi, Wawero. So my question to you goes like, the, I've been asking actually, or is on mute, uh, when you get a house, so I was in, I was in Madaria the other day and I went to a house where this lady spent 2000 shillings. Uh, the house floods, the house has no security. And when she got the house, she's never told it's going to flood. Or another example, you move to an area where you're told there's water or there's a borehole water that is 500 shillings. And then you start living in the it's 2,000 shillings. So my question is, are there rights that protect me that when I get a house as a tenant and it's not in the condition the landlord told me it was in, can I spend my own money and get the money back from the landlord? And if it says no, is there a cheaper way for me to get into the justice? As I told Angela, they're going to look for Baghdad boys, Chinkororo, Gaza boys, Mungiki, to tell my landlord, if you don't pay me back my money, um, um, I'm not sure Two things. Uh, if a landlord makes a representation to you, to the effect that this is existing and it is not, then in my opinion, you have two ways to go about it. First and foremost, before you move into the property, it is good yeah. to you inspect the property, find out if the property is as uh, advertised in quotes. If it is not, it is prudent before you move in because it's a lopsided relationship between a landlord and a tenant. Yeah. It is prudent before you move in, you either tell the landlord, you need to fix item one, two, three, four, five, uh, before I move in, the failure to which should I move in, I am going to fix item one, two, three, four, five, and recover that money from uh, my rent. Yeah. That's, uh, that is one of the ways in which you get power as a tenant. Now, if you fail to be able to identify these things to a landlord, then the assumption is that those things are in existence, that it becomes your word against your word and is holding your deposit. That then puts you a little bit at, at, a, at a disadvantageous position. Yes. Um, and and as, as Jackson said, all these matters are premised on, um, on, on, on an agreement between parties that you've sat down and agreed and you've gone about um, executing the agreement as per what is uh, written down, if it's a written lease. Now, yeah. there's something Jackson said about the Rent Restriction Act. Um, this act is what gives power to the tenants. Unfortunately, like all rent restriction uh, legislation all over the world, they come about when there is a crisis of some sort. Either there's an earthquake that makes housing become scarce and there's more demand. In our instance, the act was enacted sometimes in 1st of October, 1959. And this was immediately after the emergency and a lot of natives were coming into uh, the city. Now, the effect of that is you have a statute that is active that is inapplicable in vast majority of the homes. People who paid 2,500 and less can't access the justice system that has been set up by the rent restriction. Because if you're paying 2,500 in rent and there's an issue and you go and see Jackson and you want to uh, have him help you sort out your issue, even before you get to see him, eh, you need to have had like 20, 30,000 shillings just to get to see his face. 
and, uh, and that then becomes very untenable to the vast majority of people. For yes. those people who pay a little bit more, um, and, and maybe just to go back to the discussions that Jackson and, 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 and Mondumbo had, is don't put yourself in a position where your landlord can take away money from you. So if you want to move, don't move on the 30th. Invite your landlord on the 15th to inspect the house together with you. Let them identify areas in which you need to fix. Because the presumption that is used by most landlords is we fixed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten things. And for that, we used 49,000. Your deposit was uh, 50,000. Here is 1,000. Call him in, have a joint inspection of the premise. This is what I advise people. Once you have a joint inspection of the premise, make sure that that premise is renovated as per that joint inspection. Once it's innovated, have another inspection with him closer to the date. All these document. Because when you go and see a lawyer and telling him that I want my deposit back and you have got zero documentation, again, you're at a disadvantageous position. A landlord is going to come and take photos that he took 20 years ago and say, this is the state of the house when this guy was living. I used all his deposit in fixing it up. The power is always with the landlord, with the tenant. If the tenant is aware of what they need to do to have that power with them. Otherwise, it's a very lopsided relationship. Okay. Uh, so any of you can take this question. Talking about deposits, uh, what are the legal mechanisms to evict someone who has exhausted their deposits? So if I'm living in this house and I lost my job and I live on my deposit and then I can't be able to pay anymore, uh, what are the legal channels? Is it that you come and evict me? Right now at the moment is that uh, the biggest evictors are auctioneers, uh, the local chief and police officers or goons. So how do you ensure that as a tenant who is not, you're already on a weaker position, you don't have money to pay rent, and now they send for you goons to come and take your things. How does the law protect you from that? Because when you go to the police, the police say, you only should act on a landlord. It's a civil case. So the landlord feels like he has a right to send violence or to send goons to come and evict you from their house. So, um... Just like we, just as I had said earlier regarding the issue of deposit, the same way in which you, as the tenant, you can't send goons to go and maybe force your landlord to give you the deposit, is the same way that the landlord is stopped by the law from sending goons to come and evict you. But that's the theoretically. Now, yes. Yes. We, we are talking theoretically first. Yes. But practically, this is especially during this pandemic where most businesses have closed down, people have been sent home on unpaid leave. This is the time to be very brutally honest with your landlord. Yes. Because let's say, for example, you were paying rent very faithfully, then all of a sudden you have not paid rent, mm -hmm. then you have exhausted your deposit, yeah. and it is time for you to, and you yourself as the tenant, you know you don't have money to pay rent, but you have not told the landlord. Yeah. So from where the landlord is sitting, he's waiting for his rent, and it is, He's, he's allowed by law to actually come and demand that, demand that rent from you. Okay. That's why I'm saying this is the time to be brutally honest. By the time you lost that job, by the time, um, as we say on the streets, unakalia deposit, yeah. you should, that is the time to go and talk to your landlord. Just as Kimani has said, if you intend to move out, talk to your landlord before. So even in this case, if you know you might not be able to pay the rent, talk to the landlord before. Because remember, it is... It is you're, um, you're hoping for a brighter day. So unakalia deposit kitha ni utapataka kamishoni. No, you see it doesn't work like that. So now, At the end of the day, yes. you will still have to pay So rent. now, if, I, if I'm not able to pay, what's the mechanism of getting evicted? I'm, I'm getting there. Okay. Because I should have started by saying um, the law is a sword that cuts on both sides. Yani ni msumeno, inakata mbele na nyuma. You see, you can't not want to live in a house for free. True. But we all understand the prevailing situations yeah. now. You can go to your landlord and say, I might not be able to pay this rent. At, as at the time when you are utilizing your deposit, and by the way, you can only utilize your deposit if your contract allows you to utilize your deposit as rent. So the minute you see that your finances are not in order, as the tenant, this is the time for you to go to your landlord and tell the landlord that um, the way I'm seeing, I might not be able to pay rent for 
April and May, but I had paid deposit for two months. Why don't I utilize that deposit for two months as rent before I make alternative living arrangements? Because as the tenant, you also have to be cognizant of the fact that if you have no rent, you can't continue staying in a house where you pay rent, where you pay rent of maybe 10,000, 5,000, 50, 100, and you don't know where that 100 is going to come from. So this is the time to be honest with your landlord. Then once you discuss, you can come up with with other means. Because remember, by law, the landlord is entitled to evict you. If you are a protected tenant, that is your, the standard rent is less than 2,500, then the landlord will have to go to the, will have to go to the rent tribunal before they can get orders to evict you. But if you are not a protected tenant, the landlord has a right to instruct auctioneers who will come and distrain for rent. So you're saying that is in in uh, in layman's terms, auctioneer atakuja atakuchota atabeba vitu zako atakuchota. That means if you're paying less than two thousand five hundred standard rent. But if you're paying more than two thousand five hundred, yes, the auctioneers cannot come to you without the landlord getting an eviction notice. Technically, it's not an eviction notice. Who writes if you that? Are a, if you are a protected tenant, you need to go to the rent tribunal where they will get that order for you, for the landlord to instruct auctioneers. When the auctioneers come to your house by law, they need to come, they do something called your house they will say boni has a flat screen tv has a sofa set has this then you are given 14 days before they can even carry away the goods you are given 14 days either to repay the amount or to maybe reach out to your landlord you see how you will pay the outstanding rent it is only after the lapse of 14 days that the the auctioneers can come and carry away your goods i actually for want to, to understand consume. this very well and maybe someone else yes. can talk about it you're telling me yes. if I pay rent more than 2,500 shillings a month, yes. the landlord cannot evict me without going to the rent tribunal. Um, because we get landlords giving us eviction notices. There's a guy in Langata who went and came with an exhauster. And he wasn't taken anywhere. The man didn't go to court. He just mm -hmm. came and flushed the entire building with human waste. So are we saying that every single landlord in this country evicting someone without going to the rent tribunal is committing a crime or an illegality. Can the, maybe we get Jackson. Yeah, so let me make it clear. Uh, I think Boni, you are getting you're getting Angela wrong. Eh? The only protection against distress for rent is for protected tenants under the Rent Restrictions Act. These are tenants paying 2,500 shillings in rent a month or below, all right? These are tenants that cannot be evicted without a specific order of the Rent Restrictions Tribunal, all right? Okay, yeah. As for, you can hear me? Yes, you can hear you, yes, you can hear you. As, as for tenants paying 2,500 shillings and above, the landlord has a right to distress for rent. And that is the procedure that Angela is, is uh, describing. 14 days written notice with a proclamation of all the assets in your house that the tenant, the landlord intends to sell or to distrain to recover his rent. If within seven days after the notice has been given to you, you pay the rent or you dispute the value that the landlord has attached to the items that are intended to be sold to recover the rent, you inform the landlord to hire an approved valuer to determine the value of those properties in order for them to be sold for a fair value or at a fair value. If you have the rent to pay, you must do so before 14 days lapse. Otherwise, the landlord is then entitled to sell the distrained goods, except certain items that cannot be sold. Uh, your clothes, perishable foods, um, things that are on your, on, your, on your body at the time of the distra distress, um, and such, certain specified items in the act. Okay. 
then the landlord is entitled to sell those to recover um, to recover his rent. All right. Um, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Kemani Wawero. Yes, you can hear you, yes. Oh, on the same issue? Uh, no, do you want to add anything? Okay. I'll be quick. No, no, no. Okay, now no. let's introduce Linda, the CEO of Lawyers Hub. Hi, Linda. Um, hi. Your iPod, your iPad locked. I don't have the questions anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. First, when you're doing a good job, um, I, I think I just want to, I just want to ask uh, from the questions that we are receiving. Somebody is wondering, what options do you have for landlords who actually want to cancel rent? but they have mortgages and banks are on their necks for these mortgages. What, what are we able to do first at individual level, but then also at policy level? What can we do to solve this particular chain of you know, trouble that we're facing through this pandemic? Can we answer that? Kemani. Yes. Um... First and foremost, it's, it's, it's good to appreciate that landlord-tenancy relationships are very specific uh, between the two parties who are in that relationship. That means you can't start having third parties coming into it and trying to dictate what happens or how it happens. That said, um, if all decisions that need to be made here, first of all, need to come from a commercial sense. One, if you are in arrears and those arrears build to two, three months, then it becomes very difficult to pay. Number two, during this time, banks um, have, the Central Bank of Kenya has liaised with uh, the Kenya Bankers Association and the MEM Bankers to talk to people who have facilities and whose facilities shall be impacted by uh, the current pandemic. What does that mean? If I have a house and, it, and, and it's rent I used to pay off a mortgage, this is the time for me to approach my bank and tell my bank, look, I need accommodation on my mortgage. I repay, say, 300,000 shillings from rental income of 320,000. I expect this to go low. So two things. Either extend the period of time in which I'm supposed to pay my principal and loan or give me a moratorium on the principal so that during this period of time, you're only paying the interest element of a uh, rent. It will be very insincere for any landlord during this COVID period to say that I have a mortgage that I was paying and uh, I am going to default on it. That means that he simply doesn't want to walk to his landlord, nor to his bank and tell the bank that my source of income has been affected. Let us try and rework around it. From a policy level, the best policy decision for me around this thing would have been um, and what government can affect and have a trickle, an immediate trickle down effect to the tenants is um, tax. Each landlord is supposed to pay, I think, 10% tax on the rental income that they collect. So if the government says, for instance, that um, we waive this tax for the period of, say, uh, five months or during the pandemic, and this benefit should be passed on to the tenant. It automatically means that whether your landlord uh, remits, uh, remits the rent from the other side or not, eh, you can actually be able to have legislation that says um, you get that as a tax benefit, you as a, as, 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 a, as, as a tenant. How that would work for somebody who is more informed in tax would be able to uh, expound on that. But that to me would be the most effective way in which a reduction of some sort is going, would happen and would have some form of legal backing, right? Whatever is being reduced is not the landlords anyway, is what is supposed to be remitted in terms of tax. Any other policy outside uh, that regime uh, would be hurting the sanctity of contracts and the parties between them. And, and uh, any person would go to court and say, look, this, this guy is a stranger to our contract. There is no way that um, they should be interfering in their terms. So in terms of those two, it's a commercial decision. Approach your landlord, try and make a discussion that would um, make 
the decision be commercially viable to the two parties. Okay, can I so have a question about uh, you move into a house, the landlord doesn't like you and wants to terminate the contract. Can someone terminate a contract based on feelings? And if you, if, as a tenant, don't stay there for you know, perhaps one or two years, but on the other hand, the landlord like, no, I don't need your money anymore, you move out. Can the law protect me from getting evicted until my contract ends? Um, as as uh, we have kept saying, most of these um, contracts, most the most landlord tenant um, relationships are governed by a contract. Most of these contracts have an exit clause that either party can either party can can terminate the contract because remember, depending on which side you're looking at, you if you are the tenant and you want to move out, then the landlord refuses you to move out. You'll be saying you are falsely imprisoned, right? Yes. So a, even on the part of the landlord, most contracts have an exit clause. If you are supposed to give notice for one month, then the landlord needs to give you notice for one month because maybe they want to use their premises or maybe their relative from abroad just came back and they need somewhere to stay. So the, the best thing would be to follow the terms of the contract. If there was, uh, if they're supposed to give a notice period, they need to give a notice period. Mm -hmm. That, because if they don't give you a notice period, I mean, you can't just wake up one morning and tell me to move out. If sure. you have children, you know, if they're in school, you need to make arrangements or if depending on where you work, you need to make arrangements. So the only way this one can be done legally is if they, you follow the terms of the contract to the letter or if mm -hmm. the landlord gives you notice. You realize that hakuna contract me and for feelings. Yes. So to answer your question, <laughs> no, the landlord cannot so, <laughs> evict you because of I, their feelings. I, I hear you. So Jackson, uh, on the same question, actually, I want to put a rider that if you move into a house, like this is lawyer's hub, uh, when, SK, when SK built this house, they didn't have this nice, fancy background, the platform, the stage. So if I move into a house and I've invested a lot to stay there for a year, and you tell me I want to invoke the contract and evict you after two months, what happens to my 10 months of investment? Because I came here and I said, I'm going to repair the roof. I'm going to put in new tiles. I'm going to do a car shade. But you're like, no, my relative is coming back from Dubai. What do I do, Jackson? Yeah, so that also has to be handled on a case-by-case -case basis. Most of the time, when tenants take up uh, premises for whatever purpose they take it for, they usually try as much as possible to anticipate um, the use, um, the, the use, and of course the duration for which that um, for, for which they would want to use the premises for. And so, if you are taking up premises that you know we will um, you know, invest um, a lot of capital expenditure um, in, uh, in terms of fittings uh, for a, an extended period of time, then you need to protect yourself adequately within the contract. Remember, as we say, contracts are governed by the principle of freedom to contract. And so it is upon you as a tenant to anticipate the kind um, of use to which you want to put the, put the property, the kind of investment you want to put the property and to protect yourself adequately so that you don't find yourself in such a situation where you invest 10 million shillings in property and then two months down the line, um, whether by notice or otherwise the landlord decides that uh, he wants his property back. One of the ways you can protect yourself is uh, for instance, by uh, reserving for yourself um, a definite um, period um, of the lease so that uh, that lease cannot be determined before that period comes to an end. But if for any reason the landlord decides to determine that lease before the end of that period, then you, you, you reserve for yourself certain liquidated damages, which both parties will accept will be sufficient compensation for whatever inconvenience you shall have suffered as a result of the premature determination of your lease for your tenancy agreement. So yeah. again, for people who are not protected tenants, it's yeah. all about anticipating, trying as much as possible within some reasonable, you know, 
with some reasonable degree of accuracy to, to anticipate um, all the peculiar circumstances that uh, um, relate to your business. For people who are protected tenants, it is not possible for a, a landlord to terminate a lease um, for any reason other than those which have been specifically specified in the law, the Rent Restrictions Act. For example, if a landlord, as Angela says, wants to now use the premises for his own use, his own residence, then yes, under the law, that is a permitted reason for which you can terminate a tenancy. So again, if any tenant who is protected, that is paying standard rent, 2,500 shillings and below, is threatened with an eviction notice from a landlord, all you need to do, unfortunately, again, uh, you need to contact a lawyer okay. and try and determine whether the reason that the landlord is giving you for eviction is a valid reason under the Rent Restrictions Act. Okay, thank you. So we go now to Linda. So Linda. We do for Linda to connect. Uh, Linda, we have a lot of questions coming from the participants. Uh, would you mind taking, taking us through the questions, please? You're still muted, Linda. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, um, somebody's asking, I'm gonna ask two questions. One, are local chiefs allowed to evict a tenant who won't pay rent? So there are some landlords that are using um, one chiefs, are also using police officers to evict a person who's not paid rent. Is that legal? Um, so our panelists can answer that for us. Um, somebody else is asking um, that, is a, somebody else says, is a chief authorized to deal with rent issues? Some tenants run to chiefs, especially when they've defaulted on rent. Um, chiefs act on their personal whim without legal backing and in disregard to leases. Um, so this is a huge issue, also an end up a chief. Um, number two, um, somebody is asking, you have said that rent tribunal hears cases where rents are 2,500 and below. What about when a landlord is summoned to a rent tribunal because of a tenant's reporting when their rent is above 2,500? Is the landlord obligated to respond? I'm going to your story. Um, the final one, somebody is asking, talking about termination, can you use the lockdown as a reason to terminate a contract? Um, this is what they say is called an act of God. Um, so those are the three questions that are coming in. I think they're closely related. Who goes I, first? I'll take the question on the issue of the rent tribunal. The wording of the, of the Rent Restriction Act is very specific that its jurisdiction is only where dwelling houses, where the standard rent is less than 2,500. The key there is the word standard rent. Who determines what the standard rent is? It's actually an authorized building inspector from the rent tribunal. So the way people circumvent the issue of jurisdiction of the rent tribunal is that Unless there is an assessment of rent that shows that this rent is the standard rent is 2,500 and below, most people just go to the rent tribunal. So for the landlord who's been um, summoned to the rent tribunal, the new constitution elevated all tribunals to the same level as courts, as subordinate courts. Therefore, once you are summoned, quote unquote, to the tribunal, Unfortunately, you will have to go. Regardless of whether you think that the case is, it's, it's a very hopeless case that um, the, land, the tenant is lying, you cannot just say that in your house. You have to go to the tribunal. And if your defense is that this rent is, uh, we are paying rent of more than 2,500, remember it has to be standard rent. So whenever you are taken to the tribunal, just present yourself there with your, with your response. Then the tribunal will decide whether it has jurisdiction or not, and then your issues will be heard. Now, I'll also answer the issue of whether landlords can um, use this COVID-19 to 
to, to terminate their contracts. Uh, this is what uh, lawyers have a fancy term for, that is force majeure, but it's basically an act of God. I think all of us can agree that these are very unprecedented times. If maybe, um, if anybody told you on, on um, March 14th, that one day the airport would be a ghost town, everybody would say no. So these are the kind of things that fall under the ambit of force majeure. Unless your contract had that clause, you cannot really um, rely on it. it. Sorry, if your contract has that clause on first measure, then you can invoke that, that clause to terminate the contract. On the other hand, if uh, let's say you, you have lost your job and you had actually intended to stay in a house for let's say five years, or let's take a business, for example. If you had signed a lease, if you had entered into a lease agreement for five years, then maybe your, your business is horticulture. There are no international flights. There is no market for flowers. So in the foreseeable future, you're not seeing yourself being able to raise the rent that is required. Then this is the time to get in touch with your landlord or with the counterpart in your contract so that you have a discussion on how you can terminate the contract. Because if the contract has been frustrated, then it has been frustrated. Because as we say, this is an act of God. You don't have any option. The contract cannot be, the contract cannot be implemented. So what options do you have? There are, um, even the constitution allows us to use alternative dispute resolution measures. This is the time to have a discussion with your counterpart in the contract, whether it's the landlord or it's the tenant. You can um, engage the use of a mediator or uh, maybe an arbitrator so that even if the contract is being terminated, it will be terminated in terms that will not be oppressive to either party. Because we have to have it at the back of our minds that this is an act of God. If this virus was not there, then I would have stayed in this house. But now what do we do? So this is the time to be brutally honest and to explore other dispute resolution mechanism. This is where, in this instance, mediation would really play a key role because um, mediation is defined as assisted negotiations. So if you think that if you face your landlord here, maybe apart from the social distancing, maybe you can exchange a few blows because the landlord is just thinking about mortgage or even pure survival, maybe try mediation because the mediator will focus on interest as opposed to positions. So this is the time to explore other options. Even if you don't use a certified mediator, maybe you can use a third party who will help in the discussion so that even if the, the contract is terminated, you can try and salvage what is what you can salvage from the contract. Mm -hmm. oh, like me, um, I just want to ask Angie, landlord, you be at a story at a mediator and Boni has been sharing, I think a lot this week around what's happening in the slums. Landlord at a kam, a kubebe, a bebe vitu, naishie. So if you're in that particular situation, for example, um, what, what can we honestly do, especially Ukomtani where the chief is really powerful, chief Ndiyanasema, you know, how things need to look like, what happens. Can we maybe just clarify to people the powers of a chief and the powers of a police officer regarding rent? And maybe Jack and uh, Jackson and uh, Kimani can come in, um, and especially in rural areas also. Chiefs are very powerful, but do they have the power to come and you know um, take your goods or help your landlord get you out of your house. Um, the chiefs do not have any power to evict someone. They they do not. In fact, I know this might be a very radical statement, but uh, chiefs are in office by virtue of a presidential um, directive. Because when the new constitution came into force, it abolished the pres the provincial system so by uh, and they are only in for uh, they are in office basically to help in the alternative uh, to solve disputes kind of like Numbakumi. so chiefs do not have any say 
Even the police cannot come to evict you unless on the strength of a court order. So for chiefs, they actually they are overstepping their mandate when they involve them, themselves in eviction or in rent disputes. Unless they are coming in, um, as I had said, as, in, as an alternative dispute resolution measure. Then for those ones, for those landlords who have come and they have taken away people's goods, those are just rogue landlords. But um, as Jackson had said in the beginning, unfortunately, the, the, the landlord wields more power than the tenant, such that if you were to assert your rights legally, it would take a long time. So for the landlord who came and took away the goods or for the landlord who come and uh, remove the doors or remove the, they are actual, that is actually illegal. Maybe um, Jackson can answer the rest. Um, first, I think the long and short of this is that no chiefs, police officers, and other government operatives do not have the authority in law to in any way levy distress or facilitate or assist landlords in levying distress for rent. Under the Distress for Rent Act, which is the applicable law for all distress actions, only licensed auctioneers have the power and authority to levy distress for rent. Unfortunately though, um, the criminal activities, and that is what they are, of any other person who is not authorized in law or otherwise who is not a licensed auctioneer in levying distress are cured by a provision of the same act, which basically um, 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 sort of validates any irregularities in distress for rent, except to the extent that a person who is aggrieved by any irregularities in such processes can move against the landlord and obtain special damages. But practically, you notice that usually this is long after the damage has already occurred. Your life has been disrupted, you've been embarrassed in your, you know, in your neighborhood, in your person, in your reputation, by the time you get all these remedies. And so I think maybe it is time, especially during this time, um, when most tenants are vulnerable to such irregularities, that um, the oversight institutions created under the constitution and our various laws, including the ombudsman, um, you know, the um, independent police oversight and authority, all these institutions uh, and human rights organizations uh, that are supposed to oversight the executive. It is time that the government operatives that abuse their authority are, you know, uh, um, uh, put to account uh, for their actions uh, in order to, of course, stem these irregularities before they occur. But where, unfortunately, they occur, then tenants should be aware that they have options for redress for special damages where you can show that as a result of their actions you suffered certain um, um, loss. Um, on the question of uh, the lockdown, that again has to be considered on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, strictly construed, that the act of God principle, or what lawyers call the force majeure principle, is very strictly applied. Um, and in most cases, it will not be applied unless parties had provided for it in their contracts. The reason for that limitation is that the consequences, we are no doubt in agreement in the entire country, perhaps the entire world, that the COVID-19 event is a force majeure event in the sense that, you know, it really makes the performance of contractual obligations um, a bit impractical, a bit onerous and difficult. But the consequences of declaring a force majeure are different. They are varied. And so if you have not provided for it specifically in your contract, then the question is, who is to determine what the consequence of this lockdown will be, all right? 
Um, I would understand, for example, if I was a landlord, I would understand if a tenant who works, say, in the, uh, you know, airline industry, a pilot, for example, came to me and told me that as a result of a government directive, I'm not able to perform my job. Um, and therefore, I have been laid off or my salary I would have been sent off to, uh, you know, for an, uh, for an indefinite and paid leave. In that situation, then based on your circumstances, I would order our relationship in such a way that either I suspend your obligations for a period of time, all right, or I extinguish them altogether for a period of time, but with the rider that if your situation subsists for say more than three months, then I have a right to terminate that contract and now ask you to leave my premises. That cannot apply or may not apply to other industries that are totally not affected uh, uh, by this situation. For example, our members of parliament and uh, many, many other public servants are still earning a salary. You know, they have not been affected in any way by this situation. In such a situation, you'd really have as a tenant to give me good reason to believe that you want me to suspend your obligations in our relationship. So this thing has to be considered on a case-by-case -case basis um, um, in order to apply. Back to you, Linda. Okay. Um, I, I just want to say, first of all, that everyone who's sending in questions we don't take it for granted. We, we see the pain and um, we know that it's not easy to go through this particular season and we don't you know, take one need above the other because we see landlords are suffering, tenants are also suffering. So we feel you, we feel the questions and we may not be able to read your exact names just because we know that these are, these are life situations. So you may be talking about your landlord and we mention your full name or you may be talking about your tenants which we do not want to expose you in that particular manner. So forgive us when we don't call out your names, um, but we get the questions as it is. Um, so somebody asks a question, and Boni, I just want to um, ask maybe your experience in this. Kuna wase wanafanya bizna, ata kama ni stall, ama ni shop, people had you know commercial spaces, and now they're wondering, si kwa na contract, I'm just trying to leave. Someone else has a contract here, maybe six years, haina termination clause, how do I get out of this particular contract? Is this something that is common? And I think from experiences, but people actually running businesses and now the business has stopped. Landlord is still demanding money. Um, so I see some people on the chat who are saying, I had two business rooms, but due to economic times, I had to let go of one and squeeze in the other. The landlord has refused to give back deposit for the vacated room. What do I do? Do I go to the police? Kindly advise. Um, someone else is saying they got into a new house, um, and, but they said myself and my neighbors have agreed to request for a rent reduction as our landlord has said he cannot waive the rent entirely. I am drafting a letter to present to the landlord with the proposed reduction percentage. Would it be possible to have any of you review it for us and advise us on what to include? Uh, thank you so much for your time and for this talk. Um, so, Boni, how can how can tenants organize? Because I don't know whether we have an association of, of tenants. I saw something on TV, but they were still asking for people to pay registration fees to be able to organize. How can rent, um, tenants organize around this time um, so that they can come together like what um, one of us has posted, that they're coming in together as an entire flat to talk to the landlord? But then also two to the lawyers, how do we solve these particular rent issues that um, we've mentioned in these particular questions? Boni. Okay. So, uh, me, I'll give a story in the Bible, man. So there was a man in the Bible who had a vineyard and he had tenants in the vineyard and he decided to go and ask for rent. So he sent his servant. When the servant came, they killed the servant. And then he said, no, maybe they don't respect my servant. I'm gonna send my son. When the son came, they killed the son. Then the one said, I can't go and take rent there. I'm not saying you kill anyone. I'm just saying that's the power of unity. If tenants come and tell the landlord, I hear you, Mr. Landlord, that you want us to pay rent, but you don't have enough money. 
But if you don't pay me rent, if you, if you come and evict us, there will be consequence. Right now, we are on our own. So as tenants, you must unite. You have to do it together. And I'll give you another example. So Angare Madai reclaimed Karura Forest. What people never tell you, how did she do that? What Wangari Madai did when Karura was, was being grabbed, uh, what she got, she went to the Nairobi University and other campuses and got students and said, I'm going to plant trees. And she came with a lot of trees to go and plant at Karura Forest. But along, along Wangari Madai was students from the university. And they came there with one purpose, to destroy the contractor's site. The, one, the guys who've been given the, the contract to go and build houses for the land grabbers. My point is, there's a, there's a level of unity that must, must come with a strong voice telling the landlord, because I have nowhere to go, and there's a curfew, I will not allow you to evict me. Because if the chief is evicting people illegally, the police are doing that illegally, actioneers are doing that illegally, you have a moral obligation and a righteous right to protect you and your family from the landlord auctioneers and from any other person. So do not break the law, but unite. And you tell the landlords, he nyumba atuhami kwa wakati huju atuna pesa, but we commit to pay. And we either get into an agreement. But at the same time, tell them that if they get evicted then, we have a right to resist illegal eviction. Because there is a, the, the law protects every single person from illegal evictions. But the law doesn't tell you how you need to stop the illegal evictions. So my, my advice is unite as tenants and speak with one voice. There might be traitors among you who will go and tell the land what you're planning to do. Do not kill anyone. Do not burn the house. But tell the landlord, you are not moving out and you're staying. But the lawyers can give you a legal advice so you don't go to jail. <laughs> Kimani, can, Kimani can speak. I haven't had Kimani's voice. Where's Kimani? Um, now, uh, Boni, who have uh, a perfect cause for uh, the perfect problem. It's, it might not be legal, but it's perfect. But it will only apply where you have a, a landlord who has a, a building that is owned by one guy. So if you have an apartment building that is owned by 100 people, uniting 100 people against one landlord is, is not going to help you. Now, uh, our good senator, Sakaja, has thought about this problem. And there's a pandemic response management bill in the Senate that is going through the motions. And amongst the things that they have provided is if a pandemic is declared, then you as a tenant have a legal obligation should the pandemic affect you uh, to write to your landlord and tell your landlord that, hey, this pandemic is affecting me. And uh, as such, we need to get into an agreement of how we can go about uh, me fulfilling my obligations without you evicting me. Now, the only problem is they are not said in case there is no agreement, eh, what happens? But in that instance, you can then say, we have not agreed, I cannot move out um, until we have an agreement. And then you keep on pushing at that. That's a practical solution to it. However, the, the most unfortunate thing is the landlord has put up an investment. And uh, out of that investment, he, he expects a return. As long as it takes the necessary legal measures necessary to make sure that the eviction is lawful, um, then you refusing to move out of his house, him having fulfilled all the conditions, then would be a downturn to it. During this period, and, and I was sharing with my colleague Jackson, no landlord wants to lose a tenant. Why? Because it's very difficult for you to get a tenant in these particular instances. Secondly, where are you moving to? To your village. You, have, you can't pass uh, River Chania, and I don't know, Mavokoku, as in your lockdown in Nairobi. So there, there's no way you're moving. The most practical thing for those guys who live in buildings that have got a single landlord is to speak with one voice. Let the snitches do the snitching. Let them get the stitches. Uh, <laughs> but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and, 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 and coalesce around it. For me, WhatsApp groups might not be of a lot of assistance. These big unions that are calling for registration fees might not be, because it's not, it, it's not a common problem towards everybody. If, they, if, if it pinches, then you know that you want the shoe and you need to take the necessary measures within the law to make sure that you get an amicable solution. More often than not, these solutions are also good for the landlord in that they get some form of revenue coming in. 
May I also just contribute very briefly to that uh, discourse? I would take a more, a more um, cautious approach. Um, as Boni has already thrown the contracts at us and asked us to advise uh, tenants uh, to avoid JD. Um, I think this, this, this is, this is a, a presents a bigger policy and legal problem. Um, the manner in which our legal system is ordered um, is such that unless whatever groupings, associations you'd be coalescing around, right, are recognized in law and are capable of absorbing, of absorbing liabilities incurred in the tenant's individual capacities, then tenants are well advised to be cautious in the manner in which they attempt to protect their interests. In the sense that, fine, coalesce around associations in order for you to have a stronger voice and a stronger beginning power with your landlords. But in the event that you are not able to find a middle ground or an acceptable agreement or consensus with your landlord, then be reminded that under our system of laws, persons must take individual liability for their actions. And so these events may perhaps provide a very good opportunity for people who are deserving and undeserving of certain protections at this time to, you know, do or perpetuate certain illegal things. But you can be sure that however long it will take for the landlord to enforce his or her rights, eventually liability will be individual, all right? And so I very much join Boni in the clarion call for, you know, um, um, uh, togetherness at this very difficult time in order to to push certain um, um, pu uh, push certain um, um, demands uh, for consideration by the government and by landlords generally. But I would urge that whatever uh, decisions come out of of uh, of of, of uh, those discussions, you know, or go those groupings, each individual tenant must be very rational and consider whatever action they want to take and the consequences in law that may attach to those actions um, um, in their, in their, in their, in their, in their um, um, relations with, with, with their landlords. So that, of course, you don't find reprieve for this period of time for say mm -hmm. six months and then 10 uh, years down the road, you are left with uh, liabilities that uh, you could not possibly have imagined you'd have um, when you set out to do whatever it is that you did. So I'm, all I'm saying is caution. Okay, Angela wants to say something. Um, my opinion is that this is not the time to use force. This is the time for negotiations. This is the time for all of us to be reasonable because everybody has their own interests. You cannot say that because you are a landlord, you own, um, you own 10 houses, you don't need money because everyone has their own needs, especially at this time. So my, my approach would be, yes, even if you unite as tenants, it, we all need to be very, very considerate and we need to negotiate more. We need to talk more and to be more understanding because even if we go across borders, um, like in Uganda, Museveni told the landlords to be lenient, but he did not explain how what entails being lenient. Because what did Uhuru say here? I want to quote you so that I can be able to go to the next question. So he said they get into agreements. So, uh, yes. so, so let me say this, uh, Angela. The biggest landowner in this country is the Kenyatta family, and the Moyes and the Raila Odinga and all that. So the problem we're facing as a country right now, the people who should be fighting for tenants' rights are the landlords. I've been to the slums of Nairobi, and the biggest 
dumb landlords are former councillors. They're the ones who grabbed riparian land, river land, uh, playgrounds. So we're trying to get justice as a sheep in a court of hyenas. So you're telling me my slum landlord to get into an agreement with me. He doesn't care. I met a lady last week, and I'm going to share the story this coming week, who got a child. Her house was flooded. She tried to move to another house. The landlord came and beat her up. And she can't go in nowhere. The people said, Kenya, kwa landlord, anana kwa mbesh chifo, ndo na makoso shiko. So the problem we're actually having is this country living in jungle laws. So the president, who should be able to offer direction about rent, has absolved himself because the Kenyatta family are the landlords in these main streets. It's not called Kenyatta Avenue because it's not, it's, it is a name. <laughs> they own both sides of the road. Shida iko hapo. Iinchi, nyamabuenyenye. That's a maskin. Skiza ni maskin. Najom na niskiza. You didn't let me finish. Bugi Okay, I'll let you finish. But the landlords are the landowners, are the runners of this country. The evil you are facing in this country is that the people who should control rent are the house owners. So is there a way, as a way forward, to have a policy that, number one, limits rent? You live in a, in a hovel that has no bathroom, no water, nothing. It's ninyumba yinko tu hivi. Unalipa elfu tatu. Aina kitu yote. And you can go to my timeline on Facebook. Then actually, who protects that person? And how should you ensure that the law protects them? Because right now, the mm -hmm. hyenas in parliament and the Senate do not pass laws to protect tenants because they're going to lose income. The first thing you do- And, and Boni, yes. somebody, that, that takes us to what Andy is asking. He's asking that, do we have any law of the size of houses? What makes a house to be termed a one bedroom, a two bedroom, or a three? Do we have any law on the minimum size for every single unit? Because landlords are coming up with ridiculous sizes, but charging so much money for them. Um, I think as you answer that, that will be useful. Um, and two, we have Jackie Konike, who's given a really good recommendation about what happens in Europe. If the landlord has your rent, has your deposit, you open a joint account. So that the day you're moving out, the landlord can, if you didn't uh, take good care of the house, you will leave the money to him and the account to him. If the house is okay, they sign off. That way you both have equal share to that deposit rather than having a deposit on one particular end. I don't know what comments um, you know, our panelists would give on both things that Boni has raised and the, and the comments here. So Angela can finish her, her statement. <laughs> um, so as I was saying, yeah. this is the time for us to be reasonable, all of us, because each person, by the time you're putting up that house, it is an in, in investment. You expect a return on the investment. And even you as a tenant, by the time you're moving into that house, you did not expect to live there for free. This pandemic is affecting all of us. That's why I'm saying we need to be reasonable. By the way, you'll be surprised that Kenya is one of the most overly legislated countries. We have laws that regulate most of these things, but the problem comes in at the point of um, enforcement. enforcement. Mm -hmm. That is our biggest problem. But regarding this issue, there is no specific law that governs um, landlord and tenant currently, apart from the outdated laws like the Rent Restriction Act and the uh, la, um, Cap, it's Cap 301, I'm forgetting the name, hotels, landlord, something that regulates the commercial buildings. So now that we have noticed that there is a vacuum in the law, this is the time for us to come up with uh, policies. And these policies need to be across board from the government downwards. Because if a landlord has obligations, no tax obligations have been waived for landlords. So even if he does not pay now, at the end of the pandemic, he might be slapped with a bill of several million. Even the tenant, unless the landlord expressly waives rent, if the rent has been suspended for six months, it means after the six months, you will still have to pay six months rent. Mm. That's why I'm saying we need to come together and be reasonable and find out ways in which we can agree. The hyenas will not sit with us. <laughs> that is where the unity in numbers come in. Okay. You see, it's a multifaceted approach. Then to answer the question on whether there are laws regulating um, the, num the, how the size, before you put up a building, you need to put a commercial building, you need to take your plans to them, to city council for them to approve. 
because before you put the and if the buildings do not do not and if the plans do not um, conform with the set down procedures, then you'll not be allowed to build. But we all live in this country; we know what happens. I, I won't tell you what happens, then, Angela. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> then to answer the question on what um, uh, on what qualifies to be a bedroom, ideally, for a room to be called a bedroom, it has to have a window and uh, storage space or a closet. But again, we all live here. We know you can go to a house that is being called a two bedroom, but it is not. It's technically not a two bedroom. The problem still reverts to enforcement. But before you build such a house, your plans need to be approved. And again, without saying so much, we all know what we all know what happens. And no, there is no regulation as to how small or how big a house is, but there are standards that you cannot go. So to know. educate the people who are watching us, so this is what actually happens, what Angela would tell you. If you're doing a, if you're doing a block of apartments, uh, you're supposed to have a playground and all other things. You take your plans to City Hall, they get approved. You pay 5 million shillings a bribe, that's the going price, between three to 5 million shillings for every approval. It's approved. You come back, you build a house. Then you decide, I'm going to put a new apartment on the, the playground. You go back, you bribe again. So the person who comes to inspect and approve your building gets money. So the original plan has a playground. What you have doesn't have a playground. That's what happens. So ideally, every person who's approved those bad buildings should be rounded up, taken to the stadium and shot. Uh, Jackson. <laughs> Kill people. No. They are the reason why you have problems. Our kids that don't have playgrounds, Jackson, in this city. They may do a zote. We are mute. That, that, those, those are some of the those are some of the of the um, the problems you have with law enforcement generally. Um, all the all the violations of uh, our planning laws. Uh, our building codes and whatnot. Those are violations that fall within the ambit of, you know, uh, our criminal uh, justice system, our criminal laws. The presumption, of course, usually is um, that uh, whoever commits a crime is individually responsible. Unfortunately, as Angela says, we find ourselves in a situation where all these uh, crimes are committed, uh, but no one really follows up on them. So this our problems that have remedies. The question is, who will oversight um, these public official, officials? Who will ensure that, um, where, you know, whenever violations of planning laws and, 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 and codes um, are reported, that prosecutions are followed through to the very end? Um, now, um, as Boni says, and this I, I totally agree with, with you, um, the problem right now is that uh, we may have people who are totally conflicted um, to pass any meaningful laws that will help the majority of Kenyans who are currently um, going through financial hardships. Um, it will take a lot of uh, goodwill and uh, perhaps um, pressure from the public to have them sit down and come up with proper and effective laws that will cushion Kenyans from the economic hardships that uh, they are currently experiencing, and which I foresee um, are going to last for quite um, a period uh, of time into the future. Um, and so, um, I have seen um, some 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 bills as uh, Kimani that Kimani uh, alluded to that attempt to address um, some of these issues. But in my view, and with a lot of respect, most of them are merely reactionary and I think populist. They do not address the entire spectrum of issues that affect um, the question that we are currently, the issue that we are currently discussing. As Angela said, you cannot provide reprieve for tenants without considering what those, the effects of those reprieves would be on landlords. And you can also not provide blanket solutions or, or, uh, or uh, uh, reliefs 
to everyone without considering whether they in fact need those reliefs or not. Remember that our economy depends on all these policies um, and structures that are set up to try and alleviate the problems of a few people, of some people who actually need them. So in order for us to, 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 to seriously uh, consider all these issues and come up with an all-encompassing and effective law, we will need a lot of resolve and seriousness coming from the uh, Houses of Parliament. And whether that is currently um, possible is out there for the jury to decide. Okay. I wanted to just, um, before Kimani speaks, I wanted to ask if um, we can maybe go step by step as we, as we wrap up this discussion. Um, Kwanza watu wanasema mnaongea English mingi sana, um, especially our guys joining on Facebook. Um, the guys on Zoom, we have seen your questions, um, and I'm going to ask Kimani, kuna mse anasema alingia kwa hao, haka sign agreement, na mse, waka parent two to three months, and then on the third month, mse akatokea kasema, I am the real landlord. So they have been paying someone rent who is actually not the landlord of the premise. What are they supposed to do at this particular point? You are going to leave the wrong person who showed them the house. Um, two, people are wondering, I want to move out. The landlord has my deposit. What can I do so that I can get this deposit back? If I'm not able to get this deposit, what, what step by step? What I need to do in this particular scenario. Um, number three, all the lawyers on this, on this particular um, you know, webinar. What can we do on the side of the landlord? Somebody who has a mortgage. Na ameshindwa kulipa hiyo mortgage sahi labda me lose job yake. Na maybe kwa hiyo mortgage hakuchukua insurance because mortgages usually have that provision for insurance. Did it cover a particular pandemic? What do I do step by step this either tomorrow or the coming week? You know, what exactly should I do to ensure that I'm actually protected? Na wase wanataka kuenda ushago. Kuna mtu wanasema, nataka kuenda ushago ju, siyezi ya fodi hao. Lakini kuna lockdown. Is there any particular provision in your nizani side and your bendy and be a cop? Mimi sees it to work in Nairobi anymore, make a roadblock like in the government of Shabu, you see now Nairobi. Is there any provision? What can we do in this particular case? Um, I can take this. Now, um, Bonnie. No, uh, before before the rudy story in Guinea, yeah. history of lawmakers, Mabonini, and, yes. and who have been not having your mic is on that. Um, the, the, the issue, the only way out is for the government to be able to have people like you, whom have a bigger goal or a bigger vision in society. And I'll tell you why. Without government disruption of an industry, the industry can become like a cartel, just like landlords are. So mm -hmm. landlords will coalesce again around their interests, uh, all those avenues that you've called them, and try and protect themselves. When COVID came in and there was a hike in prices in masks and sanitizers, government procured the mass production of masks and sanitizers, which then killed the cartel. If government can be able to come up with proper housing in mass, it shall kill the demand of houses that the landlords currently have. I'll give you a practical example. The national housing uh, houses in Kileleshwa. Previously, nobody could go and live in Kileleshwa. It was a very expensive place to go live in. After NHC put up apartments there, sold those apartments at reasonable prices, rent prices uh, for houses in Kileleshwa dropped. Now, without visionary thinking to provide serious housing and mass, the rent market shall not be disrupted and it needs to be disrupted. Secondly, tenancy agreements are not a commitment to servitudes. When you come and look at a one bedroom house and you want to take it as a two bedroom, you will sign off with that house having inspected it. You will live with your bad choices. Now, back to what I had previously said, there is no bandage solution uh, to this issue, uh, to take a like, uh, lasso plus and things sort out. Akuna, uh, it's radical surgery, upasue, uangalie, utengeneze, mgonjwa kaya meka kumi ya kilikawa. Now, uh, to the questions that were posed by Linda. One, the guy who paid a con man that money, eh, 
hiyo ni shida yake he needs to follow up with the conman because the land owner's obligations as has been said by jackson and uh, mondumbo is they don't extinguish they are there so if you haven't paid the proper landlord you've been paying a cartoon of a landlord you go follow up with the cartoon the landlord has an ob- has has a right against you for the rent that you've occupied there deposit back how do you get it as i said earlier as a tenant you must be meticulous you must look at your contract what your deposit was supposed to cover and make sure that you have individually covered for that deposit assuming that you have uh, actual repairs of 10000 deposit is 50000 fix those uh, repairs call your landlord have a consensus that these things have been repaired to your own uh, to his satisfaction if it hasn't then go ahead and do it to his satisfaction if you don't do that you will not get your, uh, re- your your deposit back the biggest mistake people do is they want to vacate on the first and the landlord has somebody who wants to come in on the first which means the landlord will have to do those repairs give yourself ample time to be able to um, conduct those repairs have joint inspections with the landlords document them make sure that um, the landlord cannot be able to do away with it with regards to mortgages if you have a current if you have a mortgage currently and you're not able to service it um as i was once a banker banks are not in the business of repossessing properties banks are in the business of lending money their keen interest is not to come and throw you out of your house and auction it approach your bank find a way in which you can be able to restructure that facility because again banks have got reports that they need to give to the regulator uh, cbk their pr reports which loans are bad which loans are not bad which loans have been restructured and whatever they make provision for it's into their profit so it's only their business really to come after you go talk to your relationship officer give them the scenario find a way that you can be able to restructure that facility once you found that way then commit to it the problem is you find a way and you don't commit to that way then you become a perennial defaulter which then means that the bank is wasting money on you then there's a guy who wants to go back to shago i will tell you this we kalisha corona nairobi ngojea corona ikwishe and then you can move to the village don't start taking that disease to uh, old folks there it's not fair to them it's not fair to anybody so ejikaze tu kuna nairobi talk to your friends find a solution amongst your friends kama una marafiki eh fungua ka ngilisha bonia kuweka kwa facebook page yake watu wanaweza kukuchangia otherwise there is no legal solution for you shit <laughs> Uh, my two cents by the way jackson i know you can see the questions actually up the screen if you have seen the comments yeah i i i, I totally agree uh nothing useful to add to what uh, kimani has said unfortunately for the person who has been called uh this is an open and free market uh as a tenant before you 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 agree to enter into a landlord uh into a landlord uh, a tenant relationship do your due diligence be sure that the person signing uh, on the dotted lines is in fact entitled to sign there um, um, yes otherwise if you find yourself in that unfortunate unfortunate situation where you've already paid a conman then uh, liability of course has to follow um, against that particular person that you have paid and in that case what you would be swing for is uh, uh you know um total failure of consideration the purpose for which you entered into the contract has totally dissipated um as for the landlords who currently have mortgages and are looking for ways to um relieve themselves of whatever situations um uh, they find themselves in as a result of covid again i will emphasize please please avoid the hard mentality sit down if you have a lawyer visit your lawyer with all your charge documents and any other loan documentation that you have you may have signed let your lawyer advise you on all the possible reliefs that may be available to you as a result of this situation and whether the conditions that all of you anticipated and provided for in that contract 
are available for your benefit um, at this time? In other words, okay. are you able to invoke those conditions for your benefit at this time? Um, I know a number of uh, financial institutions that uh, you know, are currently restructuring their, uh, their loans with individual customers, depending on each circumstance. Not everyone needs this, uh, needs this uh, uh, reprise. So take it upon yourself to yeah. visit your financial institution and try and get reliefs that are best tailored for your conditions. Again, on the movements from um, Nairobi uh, to the rural areas because of uh, circumstances beyond your control, if you're not able to pay rent and you're not able to get uh, any arrangements uh, with your landlord to continue your stay um, and defy your payment obligations, I think right now um, the, the discretion is entirely on the state to determine uh, deserving circumstances for anyone who would like to uh, be excused from the lockdown regulations. And so, of course, these are human beings manning these uh, 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 border control points. You may uh, attempt your luck, explain your situation, and who, who, who knows, you may be allowed to move on, subject, of course, to um, any testing that you may be required to go through to certify you healthy uh, for that purpose. Uh, the Thank public you, interest in not allowing people to travel across borders right now, I think, um, right now, uh, supersede any other private interests that may, they may, that may, uh, um, you know, force you to move to the rural areas as it were. Thank you. I have one question, and then you go to Linda. And my question is: So Nairobi is a very beautiful city, but badly planned, and so. If someone built a building illegally on a public playground or a social hall, uh, if there's a chance for us to demolish that building because it's illegally built, does the law protect me to go and demolish that building? And then I'd like to ask, how come land grabbers? So if I'm a chicken thief um, and I get caught or a maze thief, I go to jail, but a land grabber is told to pay a fine and they're released. How does the law work in that? particular place where someone is told you grab someone land, you pay a fine, then you go home. And then my other question is, is, there, is it okay? Because when Moy was president, a lot of churches and most good public land. Are we, as the people of this country, and if you have a revolution tomorrow, do you have a right to build those, to burn the churches, burn the mosque, burn the temples, and build playgrounds and sports houses and recreation grounds for our people. Because I don't believe, if you believe in Allah, if you believe in God, if you believe in Buddha, or you're a pagan or an atheist, whoever you pray to, I don't think that, that, that being that you pray to appreciates you grabbing public land to pray to them, which means you're on stolen land as you pray to that particular person that you pray. So I'm thinking, as the people of this country, my kids, my goatees are gone because they play on tarmac. So if we reclaim this country from the vultures and the hyenas, and the land grabbers who have stolen our country. Can we demolish all those public places that have been grabbed? Hilton is, used to be a bus station. Serena Hotel used to be Uhuru, part of Uhuru Park. Any chance we can reclaim this Mabuanyanya property and just build public parks and footpaths and cycling lanes for our people? Can the law protect me if I start burning those places? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and um, <laughs> Boni, uh, yes. uh, 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 I'm protected. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Boni, yes. I think you need a very personal lawyer to help you through life. For example, <laughs> if, <laughs> if you go demolishing things. <laughs> but it's on public um, land. Ndungu report says it was public land illegally acquired. So Ndungu report <laughs> was a report commissioned by a president, Kibaki. <laughs> so I think um, Jackson Awele is going to answer that. But I'm also <coughs> going to say there are people who are taking, you know, the law in their own hands. Lando Daki kuja kuwa evict. Yo story umesema ya kanisa. Lando Daki kuja kuwa evict. Wengine pia wana hire goons. Now, I'm not a landlord, especially Ukum Tani. 
So we also need to know, can the landlord charge you for assaults? Like, you know, if, if you're doing, if you are, if the landlord comes for you guys, na jini kwa say 12, na landlord na kupike yake, ama agent. Kuna wasewa nasema, agent ame kuja memkoni, anambia agent, introduce me to the landlord. The agent is like, I can't introduce you to the landlord. Do I have a right to meet the landlord um, if I'm paying for that particular house? And so there are people who also said, I think on Zoom, on Facebook, if they take the law in their own hands, what happens to them? Are they protected just because somebody is doing this the wrong room? Jackson. Yeah, most of these agents um, operate at the behest of uh, uh, their landlords. Um, and so where you're going to get into a relationship with uh, an agent, uh, particularly, uh, you know, a landlord tenant, tenant, uh, tenant relationship, then obviously you are entitled to know who exactly the principal in that relationship is. Um, and where it is disclosed to you that, uh, yes, the principal in this relationship is uh, so and so, then yes, it is up to you to uh, make the necessary efforts to make contact with that particular landlord. And um, in the same way that uh, parties are free to contract, you are free to make it an uh, 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 a condition of your contract that unless I meet my landlord, I cannot enter into this relationship. Otherwise, if you throw caution to the wind, and agree to enter into that relationship with, without or before seeing the landlord, then obviously you must be ready to accept the consequences of uh, your actions in the event that uh, uh, in the end they are adverse. Um, as regards the demolitions, uh, 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 Bonfas, um, you see, facts are usually very stubborn. And uh, the law can only be applied to facts. And uh, the facts, according to you, may not necessarily be uh, necessarily apply uh, to the facts as the grabber sees them. And so the danger that you run is that uh, you will demolish the house and then after the fact realize that your facts were in fact wrong. And that is why, for me, my advice would be move with caution. It is better for you to move a court of law, seek a declaratory relief, in essence, a statement that is binding in law that your facts as you perceive them are correct and when applied, or rather the law is applied to those facts, then the consequence that you feel should attach to the actions of that grabber um, will also be lawful. And therefore you, you protect yourself from liability um, in the event that later on, it is a judge that you are wrong um, from the beginning. So uh, these are very emotive issues, but that is mm -hmm. why the law is in place to, 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 to mediate and to ensure that uh, uh, people move with caution. Okay, I, I hear you, Jackson, and I want to appreciate especially what Bonnie has been doing in reclaiming public spaces. I think now we see as a country that children actually need spaces to play. We have apartments now where our children are stuck in the house all day, always in the playing ground, which should actually not happen. So I, I really feel what Bonnie has been doing together with the, you know, the Should Aid Initiative that we need these public spaces that are available to us, that even in a pandemic, children actually have spaces that they can go out, play. People have, you know, are suffering mental health issues because right in your estate, your estate was not built to even take care of a public space where people can go and, you know, play in the evening, even if there is social distancing, that they can also go in turns and play and have their mental health issues um, handled. Um, Bonnie, before I get to you, somebody is saying um, two experiences, somebody is joining us on your page on Facebook, um, Sue Mocha from Canada, uh, but I want to read what Owendo uh, is saying. Uh, she's from the U.S. and she's saying that I don't think mortgage insurance covers pandemics, at least not here in the U.S. What is happening with mortgages is banks are asking mortgage holders to call if they are not able to pay so that they can get forbearance 
for between six, two and six months so that they can get that pause on paying. Uh, during this time, interest is not accruing. I think the financial institutions in Kenya should step up and offer goodwill service to their clients. Um, so I think that's one of the things that maybe we could borrow from, from the US so that people have this tax break or this mortgage break that they can, they can take through. Boni um, wasewa kukua Zoom wanasema, hii si unatupoteza sana na hizi story unasema hapo ipo. <laughs> oh, sana, lakini nilikuwa na swali hapo sijajibiwa. Hii mambo uh-huh. land grab anapigwa penalty ya fine ya 5 million na chicken thief anafungwa 5 years. Why would you not jail the, the land grab is still Akimani, okay, why land grabbers are not jailed? There's no land grabber in jail, but how of the country is going to the land grabbers? Boni, um, first, uh, the land grabber can afford a good lawyer, eh? Uh, <laughs> the, those uh, are the first steps towards you making sure that you don't go to jail. The chicken thief fears a lawyer. In fact, those are the magistrates, the prosecutors, the lawyers, one whole big team. Eh? And they yeah. probably fear that they need to say they are guilty and they shall go to the light sentence. Uh, then theft is theft. Eh? Whether you steal a million, uh, 10 shillings, or 100, 100 million, it's still theft. Um, the sentences are provided by statute and what they can be able to, um, to, 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 to be hit with is, 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 is similar. There were a couple of questions that had been asked, um, and, and I think Jackson uh, said it very well. And, and this is now to you, Boni, and, and your activism. Yes. Your facts will help you. Take the painful time of looking at the root title. Take the pain, yeah. as in from the root is where did this property come from? Uh, when was it allot- allotted to the government? When was the allotment changed to a private ownership? Was the procedure done properly? There are a lot of court holdings that have pointed to the fact that if a property was uh, reserved for public use, then you cannot reallocate it. And you might be aware of when Bet went with the caterpillars, um, the late Bet, when he was minister for roads. And um, he demolished a house, I think it was in Kilelesh or some, some very grand house, complete with jacuzzis. So the moment you have exhausted the, um, the, the, the remedies available to you as a private citizen, that this property was allocated irregularly to this particular person, then even the courts are going to tell the owner of the property to demolish it, or should the state demolish it, then they shall pay for it. Look at the Nakumat that was on Thika Road, for those of you who had come to the city in the, nine, in the late 90s. There was a Nakumat there. And, and that number so it's was two thousands. It's two thousands. Simbali sana. Uh, yeah, it's two thousands. Rivita Road. What did you say? For that number, it was taken down and Thika Road was built. So, um, going back to what Jackson said, if you are intent in getting public land back. There are procedures that you can be able to follow, establish the sanctity of that title being uh, irregular. And after that, then you can be able to have that building uh, removed. Given your spirit, Boni, I hope you've married a lawyer. Otherwise, you need to have a, lo- a huge fund eh, for paying lawyers. <laughs> Otherwise, before you get into a thing or someone and want to pull a building down, first of all, yeah. you'll be arrested for malicious damage to property. Uh, probably the thing that you have not paid for it that might be cost. There's just a lot of bad things that might come after you if, if, if you are not procedural as, as Jackson had, had, had stated. Okay, and you. remember, Boni, remember, yeah. Boni, that uh, yes. um, most of this, some of the people who are currently um, on these properties may be third party purchasers for value without notice of any illegality or, or, or irregularity that may have occurred previously. So you may end up hurting someone who had absolutely no idea of the issues that uh, you know, um, uh, preceded his acquisition of that title. You know? So that is why sometimes it's, you know, caution is urged um, with how you decide to, to deal with such situations. Okay. Angela. Um, I think my colleagues have said um, have said um, everything. I have nothing useful to add, especially with regard to the um, uh, demolitions <laughs> or reclaiming <laughs> public land. Um, 
my concluding remarks would be that housing is an is a basic need because it's a basic need we all need to come together to see how we can alleviate this crisis because i believe it's a crisis when i say all of us i mean even the government i would propose uh, measures like some policy measures like uh, maybe a moratorium on evictions for now because you see if you grant a moratorium on evictions it does not mean that you will not pay rent it just means that at this point you cannot be evicted, evicted yeah. and later on if you're evicted you will still but oh I've remembered that what we mesema kizungu imekuwa mingi sana. Later on, bado utakuwa na hiyo deni ya rent. But if there is a moratorium on evictions in Amanisha, hauta hauta chujwa kwa nyumba. And those are things that ni serikali peke yake inaweza tupatia. On the policy side, we could we could also have uh, mortgage reprieves or waivers. Currently, banks what banks are offering is um, a forbearance such that you don't pay now if they give you for six months what is happening at this point is that after those six months whatever you were to pay for these six months will be due all of it will be due at that point maybe they could restructure that such that if your loan was if your mortgage maybe was for 15 years for, they could add those six months at the tail end of the 15 years mm -hmm. so that you get your mortgage to be repaid in 15 years, six months, as opposed to what we are having now. Because currently, then if you get a waiver for three months, after the three months, whatever you are to pay for these three months would be, would be due and owing. Also regarding um, landlord and tenants, maybe you could talk to your landlord such that uh, they could accept payment in installments most of us think that if your rent is 10,000, you need to get all the 10,000 at once so that you pay. Maybe you could get into agreements where if you get 2,000, you pay. If you get 3,000, you pay such that you are fulfilling your obligations, but maybe over a period of time. Then on the part of the government, maybe they could um, guarantee endless supply of water or electricity. I heard the health CS say that uh, even if Bill Haujali passed in my Sikatwe, I almost told him to con a token. Prepaid. It's prepaid. <laughs> even if you, do, if you don't pay, you don't get power. Yeah. And if you have ever looked at your bill, you, uh, uh, the prepaid um, <laughs> token, you'll find that if you paid power for 200, whatever you actually bought for power is maybe like 110 mm. or less. Upon your serikali na ingilia, such that they waive those things, so that even if you buy power for 200 bob, you actually get power for 200. See your forex, see your nini. Na ata KPLC, sometimes ukituma kama 100, wanakuambia iyo pesa yako idatosha, ongeza 16 bob or ongeza 20 bob. So that taxes. Mm, imekulua yote na taxes. So we all need a multifaceted approach. When I say we, all of us, it should come from the top because some of these policy measures because kama hana stima, hana stima. But if akona stima such that with 200 bob, mtu akona stima na akona maji, then there's a moratorium on, on evictions to neza saidika, to neza saidika sisi wote. And uh, Boni Unione Kando, I think you need a very good lawyer. <laughs> pro bono lawyer for Apa. He's a rather pro bono, but. Sasa, how is No money. Sasa, um, I think we need to wrap up with this particular and I eat a few. Um, so that we get home in time. So I'm yes. just going to ask each and every lawyer um, to make a comment. And then Bonnie and I will make a comment at the end. We can get our masks and, and get together maybe for a, a group picture. Just so you know, we are all in one place. Uh, we're just exercising social distancing. Um, so I think I'll begin, begin from Kimani. Kimani, people are saying, you're so real. Um, and people are saying, Angie, are you a landlord? Because you, you're supporting landlords. <laughs> Only landlady. <laughs> <laughs> and Awele, some people want your number. <laughs> but I saw your wedding ring, so they need to know no way. Um, so those are some of the comments we are getting. If you could just give us the last comments um, on what we need to do. Those who joined us on Zoom, we have we were doing a poll. So please just take in the poll. 
And if you're together with us on Zoom, we won't end the feed until we get to network. If you need a lawyer, please let us know within, uh, within the comments. Um, and people are asking, are these lawyers available to offer pro bono advice? Because we need advice, but we cannot afford it. Um, are the three of you available for follow-up? And if we need to follow up with you, how do we find you? Um, please share that with us. Please note that people don't have money. And so we are trying to look for solutions that you know, do not necessarily involve a lot of money in that particular case. So I think I'll take it to the lawyers and then Bonnie and I will close at the end. I think I've been told to go first. Um, the novelty of this pandemic, last seen in 1918, um, is something that if you experience it, you're too old to remember that it was there. Whatever problems that we are facing are unique, they are new. If people don't look for solutions that would come from um, a new solution to the current problems, then you are trying to fit a square peg into a round pin. Anybody who does who runs away from this solution, an amicable solution shall be had. If a landlord doesn't want to listen to a tenant, they can be caught chasing the wind. Because the truth of the matter is, at the end of the day, the landlord wants some money. If they can't be able to get some money out of it, then um, it would mean that you are chasing somebody for rent arrears that that person can't pay, or his things that are in his house can't be able to uh, make deal after their distress for rent. You go ahead and sue a person who has got no ability to pay, what do you attach? Um, a lot of understanding is required from both parties. Uh, people must realize that people are put in investments and from those investments they expect a return. Whoever who is a landlord needs to appreciate that things are different and if somebody is offering you a solution that uh, is not the best but it's something meet them halfway. Um, in the absence of such, then you're looking at what Bonnie quoted from the Bible, some form of anarchy. And uh, it comes from the purview that if you need to comply and in the process of complying you die, the most natural thing is to survive then comply. And, and that, that is as natural as feeling pain when you're hit. So if you as a landlord imagine that you can be able to push your rights and yes, the law does provide for that, you might be able to get your right, but it might be far long into the future that you'll have lost a lot more opportunities in looking for those particular rights. And even after you get your, your pie, you might not be able to get anything out of it. Um, that's my take. It's a novel situation let's look for novel solutions. My policy-wise, we need a visionary thinker. Um, you need somebody who is not drunk with power, somebody who looks above themselves. You need to look at um, countries like Singapore. Somebody who just comes in for a generation and that one generation changes an entire landscape. I would say a guy like Kibaki, but again, I might be beaten because of his misgivings during his second term. But you need somebody with a bigger vision. Um, and, and without that, then we are in hell. Eh? Now, um, those, of, those of you who would want to follow up, uh, I, I, no lawyer should lie to you that they are going to court. Even Angela looking as uh, sharp as she is and, and, and dressed for court, uh, I doubt she's going. Any lawyer who has a few minutes should be able to, to, to spare for somebody just for purposes of consult. Personally, I am. Um, the truth of the matter is it should be a consult. Eh? Uh, just one of those brief things. <laughs> my, my, my people say that, that you need to put uh, on the horn. You must pour something on the horn so that my throat can be able to talk. So, yeah, yeah. You, you must lubricate my, my throat when you're coming to talk. Oh, come on, I will give you advice and I'll refer you to a good lawyer. 
orang tua yang ngeloy ya home you can be able to afford lagi ni sekarang majak so dapat dia yang ngeloy ya home home can be able to afford good sound that way gama 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 as it we are available that's what I'm trying to say personally I'm available for for consoles that are brief in their nature because also lawyers are Last matter, my kid was survive, um, and and I would say that if it gets to a particular place, take time. It's a matter that has interest to you. We we cannot survive on pro bono matters um, as much as we offer it. If you want in depth solutions that's going to take you um, to make you actualize your rights, go see a lawyer. They should be able to sort you out. Um, parting short, Lynn. Thank you for having us. Um, thank you for the discussion, Bunny. Uh, we hope people have been assisted with the little that we have had to say. Thank you. Jackson. Yes. Uh, for those who are very fond of Wakili, a brief one on DM, this is your time. <laughs> I am very happy to offer my services at this time uh, to assist anyone who may be in doubt on any legal question, uh, specifically pertaining to a basic need or issue um, as the housing um, 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 crisis or issue. Um, um, and that for me ties in with the broader issue and my closing remarks that um, this pandemic has presented us with a very unique challenge which we all admit um, you know is debilitating um, or maybe debilitating in the long run and so i would just like to urge all of us to be mindful of each other's interests um, as tenants let us be mindful that landlords have obligations too, they have needs as well, um, and they have interests. And so even as you consider your options with your landlord, please, please be considerate, be honest, approach your landlord. If you cannot absolutely meet your obligations, your payment obligations, be straightforward with him and offer practical solutions that will provide a win-win solution. If you're able to meet your obligations, please go ahead and meet those obligations. Because whatever it is that you do at this time, however little it is, will go a long way in helping us meet the challenge that is COVID-19 together at this very difficult time. Landlords are advised where you can come up with practical solutions to help alleviate some of the challenges that your tenants are going through, especially tenants who have been good there are those tenants who you know very well are able to pay, but are always late with their rent until you follow up with them. That is when they come and pay. And you know, even when they pay, sometimes they pay piecemeal. Um, but even for those where the circumstances warrant, please understand and adjust your expectations accordingly. We are in this together as a country, as the world, and we will only come out of it um, if we all, you know, uh, make concerted efforts um, to assist one another in a very honest and considerate way to come out of it. Um, so with those very many remarks, I'd like to thank the Lawyers Hub for organizing this very informative uh, uh, discussion. Um, and I hope whatever it is that we have discussed today has assisted someone somewhere with whatever legal uh, challenge they may have had. Um, other than that, we are still available for consultation um, as and when required. Uh, visit, for my law firm, you can visit our website. We have an email address that you can contact us via. Uh, that's sanitizer. <laughs> uh, throat sanitizer. Throat sanitizer. For tenants. For tenants. For tenants, for landlords, we can talk, you know, we'll agree. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you, Linda, for having us. Thank you. Landlady. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to say that um, we are living in very, very unique times, very novel times. So it's, it's up to us to think of new ways in which we can survive. Let us all be very considerate and let us be brutally honest with each other. Because for most of us, the landlord has always been maybe a number on an pesa. Now it's time for us to see that the other person is also Human. going through the same things that we are going through. I mean, if you are told that there would come a time where the only church would be TV church, I, I don't think anyone would have believed it. That is how different and how unique this period is. So let's all be considerate to each other and Together we can come up with solutions that suit each one of us because um, it would be very hard to come up with a one size fits all. This, and this is why we are calling for brutal honesty for everyone. Then we shall survive this. And uh, for those who would like uh, legal advice, you can DM me, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk. Where, 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 do we DM? where do we find you? Um, I run a law firm called Mwadumbo and Company Advocates. Our offices are at uh, KMS Center, ground floor, apartment block B. That is uh, B for boy. I'll, I'll put my contact. So, say the DM you wear. DM you in kwa social media. I'm getting there. Um, I, um, <laughs> I'll give Boni my contact. Then he shall put a, a comment on his, on his page. I, uh, then I'd like to thank uh, Lawyers Hub for having us. It has been a very eye-opening discussion. I hope we have helped, uh, because I, for one, have learned one or two things, and I'm grateful for this opportunity. I hope we have managed to help people out there. Thank you so much, Linda and Lawyers Hub, for having us. All right. Thank you so much, Angela, Jackson, and Kemani. Thank you for having me. I'm not a learned friend, so I was here getting educated. I've been taken to school by the landlady and the two gentlemen. <laughs> uh, as Linda said when you started off the camera, I said that lawyers stop masturbating. What that means, lawyers have a lot of knowledge about what's going on in this country. What's early in this country is the lawyers who know where the money is hidden. It's lawyers who are for the crooks. They know the offshore account. They know the nominee's account. So let me tell you, Kenya would not be so fucked up if it wasn't for lawyers, because they help crooks. So lawyers help us reclaim back this country. Most of the people who have stolen from us in this country are not lawyers. So they always go to a legal mind to evade justice. So I'm hoping that some lawyers can become like Mandela, join the struggle to liberate Kenya from what? The vultures, the hyenas, the land grabbers, and the very many bad landlords in this country. So lawyers, stop masturbating among yourselves, take your opinion to the public, Educators, give me the information. I will leak it. If you're the one helping people steal, bring me the information. And I love you, lawyers, but stop working for crooks. Or cocaine it for that watch a kofanya kazi na wakora. I know you have to earn. You can represent the devil. But some devil should, should be left alone for them to roast in their own fat. I am going to my church and my Maliza, as I did my lawyers, and the two my finos. You are that cousin. What? And then you're not invited again. <laughs> 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 using the words, you know? <laughs> Talking about Kenyatta Avenue. This is adults <laughs> watching. It's adults. <laughs> no, we, we appreciate what you do, and you do an incredible role. And people need to know that everything is connected. Our call for good governance is actually connected to what people are going, you know, going through now. For you to lack rent, and your government cannot offer any reprieve. It just means that you need a better government, you need a better system of allocating resources. You know, we need a better country. And, and so it's in giving people information and empowering them that we think we can make better decisions. And I think today, from what Boni has talked about people organizing, I think tenants need to know each other. If we are talking about Mubakumi, you need to organize and know exactly who is your landlord. In the US, for example, there are companies and organizations, and this goes to the tech community, 
they're actually mapping landlords so that you know you're real landlord. And if something goes wrong, you actually have an app or a, a tech you know, system that enables you to know who is the landlord where. If I'm going into this building, nobody's going to con me because somebody has come up with the data and mapped out landlords for each and every building in that particular case. So I think we need to join efforts you know, across, across sectors and ensure that we're actually doing something with our talent and ensuring that this is you know, a better country. Um, I have posted a number. If you need legal advice, please don't call, just text this number and we'll be able to connect you to a particular lawyer to help you to call. Um, please do not pay and do not call. Just text this number, 0733 0733-221-313. Please don't call because we won't pick, but just text and then we'll be able to you know, help you and connect you pro bono with the lawyers that you've spoken to today. Um, where they have time, we're going to strive as much as possible to give you pro bono legal advice so that you get down through this. At this particular point, you're only going to offer advice on if you're a, a, a tenant and you're figuring out a way, whether you're a tenant at a commercial building or in your house, we're going to figure out how to make that, you know, make that happen. So 0733-221-313, um, we'll be able to help you. If you can send a WhatsApp or you can send a, you know, a text message, we'll be able to sort you through this particular issue. But Bonnie, we'd like to have you back. Um, somebody's asking if you're able to have a discussion around writing a will, because we are trying to see whether we, are we gonna die through this pandemic? Do you have a will? Somebody else is wondering, do I need a will, not as a Mali? You know, do I really need this thing? Bonnie, do you think that's a good topic that we can, we can talk about? It's a good one. To bonge, to Yeah, I've- What, what uh, will I have, there, what I have, um, just for those who may be interested, I did a, a client alert the other day on uh, how to write a will and to plan your estate generally, especially during this time. So we have a number of uh, senior, uh, senior statesmen or members of our society who are a bit apprehensive and um, you know, um, you know, are looking to arrange and plan their estates at this time. Uh, you can access that a lot on my LinkedIn profile or even on our website, Awele Jackson Advocates LLP.com. Okay. That's that's useful. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that, Jackson. So I think people need to know, you know, what next? Are you planning for your children? Do you need custody? Um, because we can think of these things as far-fetched, but the pandemic just means that everybody, anybody can die. We don't know what that looks like. So we need some sort of planning around our lives and around the future. But I just want to say thank you so much for joining us and thanks, Boni, for offering your platforms as well. We really appreciate that and the work that you do. Um, Boni has done some really good reports on Twitter and uh, on Instagram as well. You know, people are living in houses that actually are flooded. They can't even put their beds on the floor. But bado, landlord and attack bado rent. Now I'm in default. You know, women with really young children are unable to afford rent. And I think for us as lawyers, we must come out and rise to the occasion and ensure that we're actually offering legal services to the general public so that we help them. We just don't sit at home and work from home. If you have an hour, please offer that as pro bono service to society so that people would know what the rights accrue to them and what they can do in this particular situation. 